and get started. Welcome. Thank you again, as I said, for joining us today for the Engine That Could webinar. For those of you that may not be familiar with Engine, today is your lucky day because we have five experienced instructors on the call with us today, all using Engine with their learners. So before we get started, I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Courtney Hacker. I am a digital account manager with uh, New Readers Press. And I also have, as I said, five instructors with us here today. So let's go ahead and get started. If, if each of you would just share your name um, and where you're from, anything else you wanna say just to introduce yourself. And um, Lynn, you're the lucky one to start because I see you first um, listed. So if you wanna unmute yourself and introduce yourself, that'd be great. All right. I'm Lynn Weintraub. I'm the ESL coordinator for the Jones Library ESL Center in Amherst, Massachusetts. Thank you, Lynn. Mary Lynn, would you like to go ahead? Yes, I'm gonna sound a little different from Lynn. My name is Mary Lynn Brewer and I'm from uh, Guilford County, High Point, Greensboro, North Carolina. And I am the ESL coordinator uh, here in High Point. Thank you, Mary Lynn. Maria, I see you're next. Tell us about yourself, please. Sure. Um, my name is Maria Fernanda Pardo. I am the head of the literacy department at the Glencoe Public Library in New York. Thank you, Maria. Andrea. Let's see here, Andrea, you came in. Can you, we hear you again, came in just a little um, staticky. Andrea, let's see, could you maybe try to join up with a different device or with your, your phone and we'll come back to you. Yep, Amy. Good afternoon, just barely where I am from. I'm from uh, Anchorage, Alaska. I teach, uh, um, I'm the director of adult education at the Alaska Literacy Program um, and I'm happy to be here. Thank you. So we're going to start off with um, Maria and Andrea with our first question regarding um, what have you done to improve student engagement with your ESL learners? So Maria, would you like to get started letting us know um, what you've done to improve uh, student engagement with the use of Engine? Sure. Um, what we discover is we need constant contact with our patrons using engine. So we decided um, to have three hours a week in different days, and we have day and night uh, times where the students can join and ask any question. We, we look at the list, uh, the command center, and see who is joining and, or who hasn't uh, to uh, use the program. And if they haven't, we call them and say, okay, you can join us if you have any questions. And that really helps a lot. We have helped people do the test the, for the first time, the VPA, which is very important for the program to really move along the students. We also help teaching them how to join the classes, the group classes, the individual classes, we also notice that some people, for some reason, don't want to do the test. So if they keep doing the same exercises all the time because they don't know how to use the feature that is in the catalog, so we teach them that and that has improved um, their response and has kept people engaged. Um, I think also another problem that we have noticed is people forget their passwords and they stop using uh, the, the program because they don't know the password and they feel afraid to, to ask or, or don't know how to resolve the problem. So we keep a log with all the passwords of all the students that we, when we sign them up, we, uh, we do that. So it's easier for us to tell this is your password 
log in and start again. So that has helped us tremendously. Yeah, thank you, Maria. And and that's when you said um, they're afraid to ask questions. That's one thing that I know. I know you've all heard me say so many times: no questions, no answers. So it's so important to really help monitor and facilitate the asking of questions. So that's a great like troubleshooting measure that you've put in place with having those passwords kind of saved to help with student engagement. So thank you, Andrea. Let's give this another try here. Oh, is that better? Can so you much hear? better. Yes. Okay, great. Thank you. <laughs> um, I'm Andrea DeYoung, and I'm the program coordinator at the Permian Basin Adult Literacy Center in Midland, Texas. Perfect. Thank you, Andrea. And um, I actually, you're next up on the question, if you don't mind, and I know you didn't get a chance to hear it, but Andrea or Maria just answered. Um, we were just talking about what Maria has done at Glen Cove to help with student engagement with the ESL learners. And would you be able to share what you've been able to do to help with student engagement at Permian Basin? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I found that kind of the most important first step in uh, improving student engagement is establishing right off from the first time I talk to a student about the account, uh, what the expectations are gonna be. So um, at our literacy center, we require students to complete a goal of a minimum of two hours, but if possibly two and a half each week. And I'll usually check in with students. We, we use a system called Remind School Communications. So usually midweek, I'll check in with each student individually. I'll let them know how many hours they've completed and how much more they need to complete to reach that goal. And I always try to make sure that I'm presenting it in a really motivational way, <laughs> as positive as possible. Um, but I also wanna make sure that they're feeling accountable for that, for that commitment that they've made. Um, and then lastly, if a student isn't completing hours consistently, I always make sure that I'm checking in with them because a lot of times there's either an issue that they're having with their device or the program. And so I just wanna make sure I'm following up with them to help them with any issues they're having. Great, thank you, Andrea. And what in, in, there's a wonderful instructor site um, embedded in the engine platform, um, the command center. And um, I'm sure that Andrea is really relying on the reporting features within the command center and looking at all of the data that is being captured there to help communicate and to help in, with engagement. So uh, Lynn, that brings me to you. Um, can you speak a little bit about how um, the command center you know, helps you with engaging and supporting your learners and, and, and also to, to furthermore how pro-literacy has been able to support your program um, with, with the use of engage, in, engine. Well, I didn't even realize that I needed a command center until I started using it because it tells me what each student has been doing and how often they've been doing it. And now I can catch a student, you know, who maybe hasn't been on for a while and find out what the problem is. Um, just today, I was working with a student who um, she'd recently started her account. And for some reason, she didn't do anything this week or last week. So I got in touch with her. Um, and she hadn't even taken the um, proficiency assessment. And so what she was seeing were courses that were way too advanced for her. And so, you know, I was able to explain to her what she needed to do to get the lessons that were at the right level for her. So I, I think that's really helpful. I can spot problems and solve them right away. Uh, and also the support that you get is really because um, no matter how easy a program is used. There's always going to be things that you don't know at first. That you, you just need a little hand-holding for. And uh, you've been very responsive in, in just making sure that when I need an answer, you get me one. <laughs> well, thank you. I appreciate that. That's uh, definitely a priority with pro-literacy and, and making sure that we are supporting you as instructors. So um, ultimately, the whole goal is to make sure that we are there for the students and that everybody feels supported. Um, Mary Lynn and Maria, you are next up. What are the attributes of Engine that are most appealing to your remote learners? Mary Lynn, would you uh, kick us off on that question? Yes, this is one of my favorite uh, aspects of Engine is that it is so accessible to the student 24-7 uh, on any device. 
Uh, if they only have 10 minutes, then the lessons are 10 minutes. Uh, and so they can grab their English lessons in between their busy lives. So I love that accessibility feature. Uh, they're also relevant. That is, um, when they first register, they have to answer some questions about their interests. I like travel. I like, I like uh, to cook. Um, I like Taylor Swift. I like uh, uh, music. And so, or I like uh, uh, the arts. Anyway, that information helps guide the, the programming for those, those curriculums. Well, those um, interests are pop up more and what's selected for them. And so they are more interested in the, the lessons. Um, but then if they change their minds, then I can go in and, and change a lesson for them if they find they do not like it. So it's very, very flexible. And uh, I love that individualization that we can go in and do for each student because I think ultimately success builds engagement and they, the more successful they are, the more they want to do this program. We, we learn best when we're having fun and we're interested in yeah. what we're learning, right? Yeah. Maria, what attributes of Engine are, are most appealing to your learners that you're finding? I love the, the live classes. I think we have, and I especially love for beginners, the group lessons. I had to learn the language when I came. So I know how intimidating it is to have to join a class when you have limited uh, skills in, in that, that language. So we always push for group lessons for our low beginners and, and low inter to low intermediate students. And then I say, save the credits for the private lessons when you feel completely comfortable and be ready to, to ask questions, make lists of questions that you want, things that you specifically want when you have a, a private lesson. But the group lessons are a great start. Um, we, I think it's very important that they, they learn how to schedule their own classes. And sometimes the first time is very tricky. So we reinforce how they have to learn about military time, which is the time where the classes are uh, scheduled on. So it's very important that they understand that 14 is two in the afternoon. Things like that, that we assume that everybody knows, we have to really um, become the student a little bit and, and uh, and know that, that we have to explain things really, um, really slowly and on depending on the capacity of the person. Also, I, well, I like Marilyn mentioned, I love oh, and the students are very grateful to be able to join any time of the day or night. We have a large Hispanic population in, in, in Glen Cove. And um, we were not able to serve a big group because they work in restaurants and our classes were either in the mornings or they were at night and people are working. So when you are able to join on a Sunday to uh, do classes or any time that you are available, it's a great resource. And I, I love that of Engine. Yeah, that's right, Maria. I, the the instructor support is just key to student success in, in, uh, at Glen Cove. And, and while all of you have done such a wonderful job of really supporting each one of your students and meeting with them to explain how to join a group a group class and how to do that. You know, once you practice it with the first time, then the next time they're able to do that. And if it works best at three o'clock in the morning with their schedule, engine um, gives them the freedom and flexibility to learn when uh, their schedule uh, allows. So thank you, Maria. Uh, next up are Lynn and Mary Lynn. So how do you use engine to supplement the core instruction that you are currently providing? Um, Lynn, can we go ahead and start with you? Okay, well, at the Jones Library, we provide one-to-one -one tutor instruction. And a lot of our students don't get a chance to speak with English with anyone during the course of their day, except for that tutor. 
So I want to emphasize that they get as much listening and speaking practice as possible in person with a tutor. And I use NGN to supplement um, so that they can also get lots of practice with uh, reading comprehension and listening comprehension and all those things that NGN is really good at. So it, it's a good way to balance out those two things. Thank you. Mary Lynn, how are you using NGN to supplement your core instruction? Uh, I agree with Lynn. Those are great features. The other side of the coin is the um, career readiness, the workforce readiness. So whenever we interview our students and set goals, I always want to know what their dream job is or their dream career. And so once we know that, then we can go ahead and plug that into the engine AI. And there's, there's lots and lots there from soft skills to digital literacy to um, uh, tracks for uh, medicine, tracks for uh, business, and they and it still is leveled out. So even a beginner can get on that career track on NGEN, and or that advanced student can get on the ed, uh, advanced education pathway um, that NGEN provides. So and it's not. It's not a token pathway. These are, this is a deep dive into a lot of the career readiness. So I'm really liking that. And then also as a supplement, our students' lives change. They change. That is their work schedules change, their families, they have surprises, and then they have to miss their regular class. And so immediately within Gen, I can say, please just increase your hours this week within Gen, um, and then that will that will keep us going. And it, it's made a huge difference uh, with all of our virtual classes and one-on-one -on -one and teachers. It's just supplemented beautifully. Thank you, Mary Lynn. Yeah, the the course offerings and career focus in this platform are just phenomenal. I, I agree. Um, Amy, you have waited so patiently. <laughs> how do you determine which students um, should use Engine? Who, how do you determine who you think would be a best fit? Certainly. Um, so the majority of the students who are using Engine in our program are students who have come to us um, and we don't have availability in our classes, our in-person or online classes. Um, so we use it as a way for students to get involved in our program um, and to be put on the wait list. We also um, <clears throat> use it um, when we're determining like who would be the best fit for NGEN. Um, we really base it on their digital literacy skills to begin with. Um, we found that a lot of students who do have lower digital literacy skills um, have trouble accessing it on their own um, outside of one-on-one -on -one tutoring. Um, and so if we don't have a one-on-one -on -one tutor available for them, um, we, we try not to suggest NGEN until we do have one available. Um, I think that, I think Marilyn touched on um, the digital literacy skills um, uh, and making sure that you do have capacity to work with the students one-on-one -on -one with that. So um, digital literacy skills, wait list, and then also students who have just barriers, like barriers of their life, their children, um, their employment, transportation. Engine has removed so many of those barriers for the students that we are using, uh, who are using it. And, um, you know, the, many of the, the other panelists here have talked about the 24 seven. Um, one of my students said to me, you know, I got on at 2 a.m. the other day because that was the time that I could go. And I learned so much, even though I was tired. And, and, and it's those types of stories that you're like, yes, they're studying um, that, that just really bring this program um, in such a positive light. Great, we love to hear that. Um, Lynn, how do you determine which students you feel at Jones Library are a good fit for InGen? Which I think every student is a good fit with InGen, but. <laughs> I tend to send students who are very self-directed, um, who have clear career sometimes. Um, higher level students tend to do really well with this and tech savvy students. Um, 
and the students who are having difficulty with, uh, you know, they can't get into a class at the time that it's scheduled. Their schedule is just at a time that precludes anything else. So um, I probably sound like everybody else here. Um, th those are the students that th this is a very convenient fit for. Great, great, thank you. Um, the next question is gonna be for Mary Lynn and Maria. Um, Mary Lynn, we'll start with you. I know some of you were awarded licenses through the Proliteracy Grant. What can you share with us about um, the licenses through the Proliteracy Grant? Uh, we, our organization would not have been able to afford this program initially. Same thing with uh, Learning Upgrade. We use the free pilot through Proliteracy to wet our whistle with and to find out is this going to work for our students and um, we've discovered that it does. Um, what's great about the Write Her Future grant is that I'm using it as a foundation for a broader grant, local grant, to build for um, for a lot more students. But I, this having this data uh, will help me to um, to grow the program and underwrite more licenses for men as well as women and, uh, and grow the program. Great, thank you, Mary Lynn. Maria, can you tell us a little bit about um, how the Pro-Literacy Grant has helped with your program? Tremendously, Did I, I don't know what we have done if we didn't have uh, Pro-Literacy helping us during the pandemic. I first it was introduced to proliteracy um, a few years ago before the pandemic. And then I attended one literacy uh, conference in the uh, timing because that was in September. And um, so I learned about all the many things that, that proliteracy had. And then when I came back, back in, I started working on grants. I, I looked up and saw the grants. So we applied for three different grants. The first one was the book, book National Book Fund. Then I applied for the Mobile Learning Fund. And that's when I learned about the uh, engine at that point that was Boxy. So I asked for some licenses. And then when I was in training, Courtney very nice spoke about um, write, write Her Future. And um, so we were already closed. I finished the grants for literacy. Not only is very generous, but um, I, as you notice, English is not my first language. And I was able to write the grants without major pain. <laughs> Uh, because it's really, really easy. So I, I applied for the three grants, we got them. And I, during the pandemic, it, phone, making phone calls, I called students that thought could benefit and we did onboarding. It was a painful job because it's different when you have people in the library, but um, we did it and really we wouldn't have been able either to afford, and we have been um, awarded for two years grants. Um, we have many people learning. We, ha we are very grateful. That's great. That's great. Thank you, Maria. Um, next question, please. And, and Mary Lynn talked a little bit about um, the different courses that were uh, that are available and continue to grow in the engine platform. But um, Lynn, if your uh, audio is working, if you're able to join, if you could um, elaborate a little bit on the different courses that are in the platform, hopefully you're able to share that with us. Oh, doesn't sound like she can hear me. <laughs> let's see, let's go ahead and move on to Andrea and we'll see if we can get Lynn to be able to, oh, she's connecting on another device. So let's see here. Once she connects, let's see. I'll hop back over to her, but Andrea, can you share with us a little bit about the courses that your learners are enjoying and um, participating in, in the engine platform? 
Yeah. Um, so they they enjoy everything. And the nice thing about Engine is that there really is something that's going to interest and benefit everyone. Um, our students tend to focus on the more essential uh, language building lessons, like the, the shopping, uh, introductions, those kind of things. And our advanced students have really focused in on the um, career and job focus lessons. And across the board, um, all of our students really love the real news lessons. Yeah, so with the shopping, those personalized units where you can really hone in on your, your hobbies and your areas of interest. And then they also have the freedom and flexibility to look into specific career sectors as well. And then uh, the real media, the lessons that are embedded in real media are just, it's, I always like, you know, you all have heard me say that's just such a great icebreaker to a new digital experience is right upon like, you know, as Mary Lynn calls it, answering those questions that needs analysis. This. Once you finish that, make your way to real media because it's just, it, it ropes you in right away because you can just get in there and you can even search if you don't want to look at something that was just updated that day. So the constant update of authentic lessons and um, just that, that really relevant piece of news media embedded in this platform. Lynn, are you able to hear us? Were you able to, sounds like you can, or it looks like. Okay, can you unmute? Let's see if we have some luck here. Gotta love technology, right? Yes, I'm, I'm on my phone now, so let's try again. Perfect. Lynn, can you share with us some of the courses that your learners are using in the Engine platform? Um, I have a former nurse who's taking a health and wellness course. Um, I have uh, somebody who works in a preschool who is taking an early childhood education course and uh, somebody's using uh, animals. Yeah, that's, yeah. You know, the early childhood course that was just recently added within the, the last couple of months. And I've heard wonderful things about that course. And then, you know, finding, uh, finding a home with the animals, with the personal units in the platform as well. So something for everybody. Um, Mary Lynn, um, you spoke earlier a little bit about the courses that are offered, but if, could you tell us a little bit more about what your learners are, you know, really enjoying or focusing in on what courses are, are being highlighted in your program? I have a, a, an educator from Puerto Rico, and she is loving uh, all of the higher level um, practice tests for uh, getting her certifications here. So she is just loving all of that focus education. I have a veterinarian from Venezuela. She's, um, she's doing the medical piece and the animals. Uh, I have business folks. Um, uh, some are assistants, uh, et cetera. And they love the business, all the business modules, especially the vocabulary. And I do want to add that the pronunciation piece, um, it, it's, it's, um, it's excellent. This is not every online platform does a great job with, uh, the, with the pronunciation that this, this program does. And the students like uh, practicing their speaking and recording it and listening again and practicing in sentences. And it's, um, it's just really excellent. So, um, yeah, so far that's that's where we are with the with the career mod models. Great, thank you. So we've talked a little bit about personalized units. We've highlighted some of the specific courses, and we know more are going to be added to the platform as the platform continues to grow. Um, there's the general education courses according to each learner's level, and another area is the academic test prep that is embedded in this platform. Um, Maria, could you tell us a little bit about um, how your learners have used the academic test prep that Engine has to offer? Sure. Um, the, the, the literacy department has different programs. We have a GED, but it just changed name before it was TASC. So um, we have, um, for Engine, I noticed that uh, you have CASAS, which is um, um, preparation for um, high school diploma or, or high schoolers. 
And um, you have the level C, which is the middle level, the more intermediate level. So because we have GED students, um, I have recommended and some are using it. We also recommend a lot the citizenship and naturalization um, programs that you have there because uh, we, we help people prepare for the citizenship. And we recently had one uh, woman, young woman who took the, she was using these programs and she also had a tutor. She passed the citizenship exam and now um, she, has one more test that she needs to pass in order to high, uh, um, get her degree. And she wants us to be an assistant nurse. So I, she's been using all three uh, because she needs to, she has in her mind goals and, and she wants an, an engine can help. So we, we use several of those for, for preparation. Wonderful, thank you. Um, let's see here. Um, Amy, I have you listed. Could you share with us some of the um, academic test prep courses that your learners are using? Certainly. Um, so I am actually the TOEFL teacher at Alaska Literacy Program as well. Um, and so when I teach my class, I try to pull in a bunch of different different curriculum to make it exciting. Um, and NGEN is one of the curriculum that I use to supplement my lessons um, that students can teach on. Because even though it has the information about the test itself, the actual lessons are so diverse and unique. Um, some of my students, um, last quarter when we were, we were teaching it, their favorite um, one was about umami, um, which, um, I thought interesting that they're like, umami, what's umami? And then when we started reading about it, they, they found it very fascinating. Um, and that's one of the lessons in the TOEFL prep is about umami. Um, and so I use it as a supplement. And then also, once again, those students who have the barriers who can't attend my class, we also use the TOEFL prep and um, to get them started into, um, sorry, started into getting the information that they need to, to pass the TOEFL. Um, most of them start there, but then they end up taking my class as well. Um, I have also recently used the ELTS uh, test because we um, are right next door to Canada and many of our students actually want to go to university in Canada and they only take the ELTS as their um, post-secondary uh, English fluency test. So um, some of our students have been using that independently and they seem to be enjoying it as well, but I don't have as much knowledge as I do up in TOEFL. Um, and I just really like it because it does have great tips for the types of questions that they're going to be and gives some great general knowledge about um, what the test looks like and um, practicing those types of questions together has really helped my students. So. Great. Well, thank you. And if anybody else has anything that they want to share, if, just because I don't like call your name doesn't mean that <laughs> you're not welcome to go ahead and chime in at any time if you go, oh, I have something I want to share. So I guess I should have said that earlier, right? Um, if, if, let's see, who's next? Let's talk about instructional models. So um, with the freedom and flexibility that Engine offers for your learners, we're talking about um, you know, being able to join a group class at three o'clock in the morning or two o'clock in the morning, being able to um, have access with the mobile device at any given time. Um, the freedom and flexibility is also there for you as instructors with your instructional models as well. And so um, Engine does not have to be a one-on-one -on -one, uh, supplemental resource. Uh, many programs are using this in, in a balanced literacy model and whole group instruction. Um, tell us a little bit about your instructional model of how you're using Engine. Um, Amy, can we, can we start with you? I didn't give you much time there in between, did I? <laughs> That's okay. Um, I think I've touched a little bit on this already, but um, since we do use it as a waitlist um, program, a lot of our students are in a one-on-one -on -one model where 
or an independent study model where they are using NGEN on their own. And then we have a program a support um, staff member who answers questions, um, helps them work through lessons that they're stuck on. And then we also have volunteer tutors who use it as a one-on-one -on -one, um, curriculum when they're they're doing their tutoring with the the student i myself i i, I use it to supplement my class um, we haven't had any teachers use it as a whole group curriculum but um based on the response from the supplement for my topo class i am planning to try to use it as a whole group in my next um, topo class because i feel that um it will actually work well. I was practicing with it. So um, that we will be adding that to our instructional model as well. Great. That's great to hear. Um, Andrea, can you tell us a little bit about um, the, the different uh, instructional models that you're using at Permian Basin? So for some of our students, it is their core curriculum. Um, as everyone's mentioned, it's very flexible for people who, who work. And so we do have students who can't take our group classes and, and this works perfectly for them. I also use this as a supplemental curriculum with students who um, are already taking some of our classes, but just want more practice and are interested in spending more time working on their English. And uh, actually last fall, we did try using it as a group instruction class and our students did enjoy it. Sometimes it was a little bit hard to keep everyone on the same track when they're kind of working through the lesson together, um, but it's, it's great curriculum and our teacher loved it and, and loved using it for instruction. Great, great, that's great to hear. Maria, what, what instructional model or what different varieties of instructional models have you tried at uh, Glen Cove? Because of the moment when we received the grants, uh, it was during the pandemic, it definitely we started independent learners. We also started later on, um, or restarted our uh, regular ESA classes during, but this time on, on uh, the Zoom, Zoom platform. And, but we haven't connected both. Um, so we have basically independent learners. Uh, however, a, a couple of months ago, we were working with you guys uh, with um, a program for very, very beginners uh, learners. And we, because we had like very, people that have very limited education in their own language, uh, we started bringing them to the library and we had four or five students. And I felt that it really worked well and we could, could continue with a group like that where we support them here and we do more like a group class. Everybody will work on the computer independently, but also in, in a group. And I think that is probably in the future that have a more organized, we, we, have, we had a very small library and we had last year, we had a bad um, rain and um, part of the library was destroyed. We are still um, <laughs> not ready for, uh, to admit, uh, to have programs inside very limited capacity. So that that is in our future too. Oh, great. Okay. So it sounds like as you, as your, um, as the pandemic cl cleans us up and as, uh, did, did I hear you say you, like you had some damage, some water damage at the program? Yes. We only have one community room and that uh, we had four feet of water. So everything has to be knocked down and, um, we have a new director, so it's been very slow. So we hope for the fall maybe to have again oh, one uh, challenge after lesson. another, right? Well, yes. I'm looking forward to hearing how some whole group instruction. Um, now that you'll be able to use your facilities, um, let's see. Let's move to Lynn. Oh, I have Lynn, Andrea, and Maria, but maybe this is an opportunity where, if, if you want, everyone can chime in, because this is my favorite part, to hear student success stories. What, what's, you know, share some um, quotes or some, some opportunities that Ingen has provided with uh, your learners, with your students. So let's start with Lynn. Okay, well, I'm, I'm just going to read you something. One of the students wrote to me when I checked in with her on how things were going. 
Um, she said, what I like about the engine program is that it adapts to my schedule. They have made improvements that have made it very useful for me, such as adding courses according to the topic that is of interest to me. I'm using the English for Early Childhood Education course since I'm working in a daycare and it has become a support to enrich my vocabulary as well as obtain more knowledge and tips that I have applied at work and have it has allowed me to develop better in the role that I'm performing. Um, and the comprehensive evaluations seem very good to me. And she added, um, having live classes from home is very practical. I think she translated this all from Spanish, but um, it describes very well how happy she is with the program. Oh, great. Thank you for sharing that, Lynn. Andrea, do you have any student success stories that you could share with us? Yeah, I have a couple I wanted to mention. I have one student, she's one of our more advanced students who um, just recently was able to get a full-time position uh, in, in some type of health and safety capacity. And she's really focused on those courses and engine, and it's really helped her to feel more confident in going into her new role. Um, and then another student we had started engine with a, a VPA score of 10, and in just two months, she went up to 150, which is high beginner from, from kind of like the very beginner level. And um, I was just really impressed. And she's a student who's really consistent and it just shows how if a student is willing to put in the time, they progress very quickly in the program. That's great, definitely something to celebrate there. Um, Maria, student success stories. I have a lot, but I'm Good. going to focus. <laughs> I have a couple of um, older women. Uh, one of them uh, was featured on the Proliteracy blog. They did this story, if you want to read it, is titled, With Love and Loss, She Keeps Learning. She's 76 years old. She's from Peru. Very smart. She came to the United States when she was 50 and she started working at the desk in McDonald's. And um, being there, um, there were two men, older men, uh, sitting at the table and, and uh, talking. And uh, then they started singing and she was cleaning the tables and she joined singing. To make this very quick, they got married. Now he... Uh, passed away like two years ago. She, meanwhile, she became a volunteer. Her English was improving and she began uh, to, she was a volunteer for a church uh, teaching English to beginners, but she always felt uncomfortable. So during the pandemic, uh, she wanted to connect. Her husband had just died and uh, she got a license and she is loving it. She is absolutely thrilled with that uh, program because she feels connected to the world. She feels her English is, is doing well. She's connecting to other Zoom classes. So, and her English is really, really good. She, I love that she wants to continue learning and being active. And I have another woman she is a seamstress and she's also in her 70s, very shy. And now she is one of our volunteers with a program where we teach each other man manual work, like sewing and embroidery. And she has become a volunteer. And it's amazing because now this morning I, had, I saw her and her, her English has improved tremendously. So I love that it's not only for young people, but older people. They, they need to feel that they, they, they matter. And so those, those are the, the two stories that I wanted to share. We have so many, and especially women. I don't know what it is, but it is, I think 95% of our students are women. Yeah, great stories, Maria, thank you. Amy, I see your hand up. Sounds like you have a story to share. I, I don't have a story. I have a couple of quotes and I just want to preface them that they're different levels. Like one person is a level two and the other person is a level six. And it's just shows how consistent NGEN is and how um, our students are perceiving it. So I'll start with the level two quote. Um, and she said, easy to use, study at home, study anytime, even work schedule changes a lot. 
So she really enjoys the flexibility of this program. And then our level six student said, there's flexible times. I can study when I feel like it and in my speed and when it fits my schedules. Chapters are interesting with news articles and other current feeds, vocabulary with word banks and sounds for pronunciation. pronunciation. There's vocabulary exercises with text content and there's gramming, grammar and spelling exercises that I enjoy. So from both ends of the spectrum, both of our students enjoy the program very much and um, they, I know both of these students and I know the hours that they're putting in. So um, it, it just shows that it's consistent no matter the level. That's great. Thank you for sharing that. Um, I have you next up, Amy, for um, discussing a little bit more about live instruction and uh, students' experiences specifically with the live one-on-one -on -one tutors and then that the group um, courses. We kind of briefly talked about that, but if you could elaborate a little bit more um, on that area of live instruction. Uh, certainly. Um, I actually think that Maria and Lynn did a very good job of talking about the, the live instruction, so I don't feel like I have a whole lot to, more to say, um, except that um, just as a general rule at Alaska Literacy Program, when we hire employees, we try to hire um, from people who are already invested in our program, and that includes students. And so um, when we do hire students, NGEN is actually the program that we offer to them to continue their learning, it, to, to continue learning their English, because um, we feel that um, our students still want to learn English and we want to provide the opportunity for them to do it. And so one of our staff members took us up on it and they, uh, we gave them a seat with the live instruction. And she said it was the most amazing programming that she um, has ever had with her English, um, in her English education, especially since, um, as Maria Lynn said that, and everybody's been saying, it's 24 hours a day. Um, there are classes 24 hours a day, 2 a.m., 3 a.m., um, and the people who are in the classes, you know, are from all over the world. They have different accents. Um, the, our staff member said that having the different accents and listening to people speaking in those different accents um, has helped her with her pronunciation and helped her um, be able to differentiate the sounds. Um, and then also, you know, that the, the groups are very small. She did the groups ones. Um, and so there was that personal feeling of getting that that one on one tension, but still being able in a, to be in a group where um, they can feed off of each other and do those learning learning circle type activities. So um, as as Maria and Lynn have said, the the, 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 the live instruction has been has been amazing um, to the point where we are going to be purchasing more live instruction seats. Yay, that's awesome. <laughs> Great to hear. Um, Mary Lynn, what can you tell us about overcoming the challenges that um, we all know and, and we've all talked about here today uh, with, the, with the struggle and overcoming challenges with technology? So what can you tell us about overcoming that challenge uh, with the students lacking um, the use of uh, the access to the technology? Well, uh, there are more computers available in communities that, um, so we, we are partnering with those community agencies. They're often, you know, public spaces and those students are going there for some of their, their lessons. If their internet goes out or if, you know, they have a problem with their laptop, um, then they have that as a backup, but almost everyone has a smartphone. And so we, all, we rely heavily on that smartphone now. Um, with, the, with the app, it's just so easy to access. Um, and our microphones are very good on the, on the smartphones. Uh, and then we have, some, we have donations. We, we try to get devices to our students um, if we can to um, make it more accessible. Um, it was harder when we couldn't meet in person to teach the what an emoji is and um, uh, what you know video means and what audio means. These are not words that are standard, especially with our beginners. And so a picture was worth a, a thousand words and we're taking screenshots and we are, we are messaging back and forth with all of these pictures. And then we start 
we started creating our own kind of internal curriculum on how to use your Chromebook, how to use your your um, your your cell phone, your Android to access or how to download these um, all of these steps with digital literacy. Um, but here's the here's the most important thing is that we do not give up. We do not give up. Our students do not give up. That is just one of their best qualities. And so during the pandemic or during these challenges, we, we, we just get that right on the table. It's that we are here because you are here and we are not gonna give up. So whatever the issue, we are going to figure it out together. And so that trust, that level of communication, that has power. Um, that has, it just has a lot of power. And I am hearing that from this whole panel, that their relationship with their students is like paramount. And then they trust us to get them these, these programs that deliver. And, um, and then if it doesn't work, then we, they have the doors open to look at other resources. So um, that's a long answer to a short question, um, but I, I hope that helped. No, that was very helpful. And, and it's so true. And, you know, when you mentioned that everybody has, you know, almost everybody does have a smartphone and with the ability to download that engine app onto your mobile device. And then one thing that I'm not sure if we've brought up yet on this webinar yet today is, you know, data is a concern for, for some learners or even just the, once again, the freedom and flexibility. Let's say you're in line at the grocery store, you're, um, you know, waiting for your children to get on the bus. We all know that downtime where you, we're all on our phones anyway, looking at something. Um, if you're not connected to Wi-Fi, you can still be on your engine app completing your activities, completing that total time studied. And once you connect to Wi-Fi, it boots up into the command center. So if we really stop and think of all of this idle time where we're looking at, I don't know, I'm always looking at something just to like, just to fill that time as a, as a habit we've all gotten into, um, you, you know, utilizing that engine app is, is a way to really capture time as well. Um, let's see here, Maria, how, how have you been able to overcome the challenge of, of your learners and lacking the access to technology at Glen Cove? I think the library has done a good job in bringing up the immigrant community to the library. And because they have come and they, we, the community see how they are improving in language skills and many other ways. The library um, is, is giving us um, ways to help them. So uh, I recently uh, received uh, for, for our department five laptops with all the equipment. We all also have uh, hotspots and we are lending to the students that way they don't have excuse. I didn't have a computer or I didn't have a um, connection to the internet. So that is helping tremendously. We also, because it, it sometimes for certain people, if you are technology wise, it's easy to do it on any device. But when we have students that don't have uh, don't have that skill, it's difficult. So computers are important. We are also starting to help people to uh, sign up for the affordable um, connectivity program that the government uh, signed up some time ago. And uh, is excellent for people with low income so they can have their own internet at home and it will help the whole community, not only the immigrants, but also people with low income. So those are things that are helping us to, to uh, bring engine in a better in a better way to the students. Great, good job. Well, we have about five more minutes left. I have usually I'm pretty good at multitasking, but monitoring chat and everything else I have not done. I haven't done that. So um, I want to make sure that any and all questions are answered um, before we get off here today. So let me I could, uh, I could also share this uh, three minute clip of a couple of student testimonials that we just received. 
Oh, okay, wonderful. Um, I see. I see that Joyce has asked about, did you want to go ahead and share that right now, Dan? Just a minute, I forgot to turn on my sound when I shared my screen. Something happened and it all disappeared. So okay. let me try this again. Okay, sure. Hi, good morning. My name is Lane Jen and I teach English at Petaluma Adult School. And today I've invited two of my students who enjoy using NGen to improve their English. And we're going to talk about what they like about the program. So to get started, could you please introduce yourself, your name, where you're from, and what is your job now? Yeah, my name is Leticia. I'm from Mexico and I'm a marketing consultant. My name is Jihen. I'm 46 years old. I'm from Tunisia, North Africa, and currently I'm a homemaker. Okay, so why are you studying English? What's your professional goal? Uh, my professional goal is to learn English, uh, to teach and help entrepreneurs in English business topics. I'm learning English to improve my skills, knowledge, uh, to get a new vocabulary, uh, grammar, and of course, uh, to get a new job here in United States. Okay, what kind of job would you like, Jihan? Uh, I'm seeking for an administrative assistant. Okay, all right. So Leticia is in the world of marketing and you are in the world of administration, business administration, okay? All right, so um, how has the engine program helped you with your English? And this program helped me a lot with the vocabulary and expression using in the business uh, environment, like a meetings and the office, and helped me with uh, improve my skills and develop my uh, communicate in English. Uh, in this program, I like uh, different levels, so it's a personalized uh, program with conversations, with writing, and especially listening, which help me, uh, especially in uh, conversations, Wonderful. and to, to communicate, especially to communicate. Great. So do you have any advice for anyone who might be interested in this program? Yes, I recommend this program to everybody uh, that wants to uh, learn English and improve uh, their skills and with the vocabulary specific and their uh, job activities. Me too. I recommend this program to many friends and especially uh, for, for persons who are beginning in beginner in uh, English. Okay. Great. Well, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Okay, Courtney, I am finished. I wanted to make sure that uh, we thank everyone who joined us today, uh, and especially the panelists, for volunteering their time to share with you all. And there is one question in the Q&A box. Courtney, uh, it says, how do organizations use the tool is it a referral to another program or a subscription? I'm sorry, you cut out just a little bit, Dan. What was the question? It says, how do organizations use this tool? Is it a referral to another program or a subscription? Uh, well, they're, they're purchase licenses per, um, or, you know, through a purchase or through approval of a grant. Um, Perhaps I don't understand the question. Oh, oh, it's, a sub, it's a subscription program. Um, I'm not sure who asked it, but it is a, you oh, do I have see. to have a license 
but the uh, the licenses are one to one. I think Courtney mentioned that in the chat. But if a student finishes, uh, the license can be reused. It's good for a year, so you can use it with other students when one finish when one finishes. You can reassign. And uh, I oh, there there's one other question here. It says, "What about instructors? Uh, instructors' licenses are provided at no additional charge. You only buy the licenses that you need for your students." And now I see another question. It says, oh, it's the same one. Just somebody repeated it. Okay. Uh, there we go. So I have no other questions. All right. So you want to close it out, Courtney? Sounds good. As Dan said, thank you both, or thank you all so much for your time and your attention. A one hour webinar, I feel like just flew by. I thought, well, we're going to have so much time left over, but... We uh, had a lot of great success stories to share, and I hope everybody that joined today learned a little bit about Engine. And if you have more um, questions, if you want to see the platform, um, I'm sure Dan put my information in the chat as we were talking. Just reach out, and I look forward to hearing from you. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day.